Welcome to Talking Insights. I'm your host, Antonio, and today we have Livio Miko from Research Executive Bucharest here with us. Today we'll be talking about labels, natural, eco, green, organic, all that, and how all those product labels are catching serious attention from the consumers, especially in the UK and Greece. There are some new legislations in the EU regarding these matters of sustainability and how to promote the new products in the markets to be repairable and to have real incentives for people to learn how to do it. Livio and his colleague Madalina created a study on these two countries and how the consumer perceive these labels of products. Stick around. Honestly, I really hope you enjoy and learn something new on this episode. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your study. I saw a bit of the presentation that uh, Madalena gave in, in, in Greece, and it was really interesting. I, I always found fascinating for people to um, bring sustainability and diversity and a concern with the planet to market research and how to incorporate two terms. My, my first question would be regarding the consumers, because I know that your, your paper and your study also mentions and, and actually talks about consumers in, in a big way. How do you think that consumers can differentiate between the genuine eco-friendly products and the ones that are just greenwashing techniques? Okay, okay. <laughs> that is the question. Well, consumers should exercise due diligence, research the products and brands backgrounds and find as many sources as possible to confirm the eco-friendly credential of the product. Who am I kidding? <laughs> of course, it doesn't work like that in real life. You know, It's impossible for people to spend uh, days, week uh, just for, to make a decision about each and every product they buy. Fortunately, this is one of the big uh, issue, the main issue we, we address in our research and the European Co uh, Commission tries to address uh, through that uh, uh, directive, uh, directive against uh, greenwashing and misleading product information. I think uh, the best way to help consumers in an ideal world is uh, to, uh, to be, uh, be able to access trusted information sources such as, uh, I don't know, uh, consumers uh, association, you know, the kind of association that Uh, independently buy and test products uh, to obtain uh, uh, trusted uh, reviews from uh, independent uh, testing and certification or organization. And this is one of the things that the directive of the European Union aims to, to tackle. And you so, were mentioning, mentioning that one of the main drives that, that you had to create this project was actually the, the EU directives and how the laws are changing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, because we start thinking when uh, happened to uh, read about this new law, I think it was a vote in the European Parliament, just to give uh, an idea how fresh it is. It was discussed for a couple of years, but the vote in the European Parliament was in January this year. And the, there are some steps until it became, became, I think it has to be discussed in the Council of the Minister what, where we should receive the final approval. And after that, in, there is a period, I think two years, uh, in which each European Union state has to implement this uh, directive into national law. And after that, it will become uh, law within you. That's the, the general framework as it was presented uh, on the European Parliament side. But it's, it's a very new initiative. But what it, it did, it specifically tried to tackle this kind of uncertainty around uh, uh, sustainability, eco-friendliness and stuff like that. Uh, they said they, uh, what this law will do, basically, it will ban, uh, it will forbid companies to pretend they are eco-friendly, sustainable, whatever. They have durable products, repairable products, because this is also a very, very murky area without proof. So you cannot say that oh, I'm eco-friendly. Okay, what it does mean? And I suspect the next steps uh, from a regulatory perspective, 
it will be to will be to define the criteria to define norms and uh, rules for uh, implementing this law and of course i suspect that at some point there will be law for creating independent certification organization uh, probably governmental organization and i suspect that there will be some kind of seal of approval like it's uh, probably uh, heard about the bio certification from the european union when you buy a uh, bio product in the european union which has the official bio product uh, seal it means it's not just talk it has to pass some to satisfy some condition to be to be certified uh, as such so we it uh, i think it it will uh, have a double impact first it will help people to have uh, real alternatives when they search uh, uh for eco-friendly clean organic stuff like that uh, products uh this is one because uh, now there are a lot of companies who claim to do that but you have no idea if how true these claims are so big problem so this law will do that just uh, will, uh, aims to do just that okay if you try to claim such things in the european union you have to prove it and you'll have to pass probably some certification approval you'll give, be given a seal of approval and you'll be able to to promote your uh, eco-friendly credentials and people could choose products with this uh, eco-friendly stamp official stamp with uh, greater trust than they do now because this is another issue i think there are some i'm sure there are some really genuine genuine eco-friendly brands but they are drowned in the sea of claims uh, and i'm convinced there are also a lot of quite dishonest brands which just do the claim part but they don't do anything uh, really to to make sure their products are more uh, friendlier to the to the environment i'm sure of that yeah or repairable or durable or whatever the claims are so the dishonesty yeah i mean yeah, it's yeah. so easy to just say and not yeah it's it. because it doesn't co- cost anything you can yeah. say that nobody picks you know, there's there's no impact okay yeah. you can say whatever you want without any repercussion or uh, responsibility and this law it's very clear that aims to change that so i think a good thing it will be the really uh, eco friendly companies will have a, a fair chance and the fact that you're doing these studies and this this types of projects almost like affects the way that we do these laws as well like i can imagine that oh. showcasing that the the that the the customers want certain things and not other things kind of affects the way that some people perceive the laws right I'd like to hope so. Uh, we do it just for because we are uh, passionate uh, about the chapters, and it was an interesting subject to showcase because it's. I think you are interested from a okay business marketing point of view, but we are also buyers. We are consumers, yeah, and we face the same problems. Maybe I did. I suppose you too, and uh, many of our listeners. When you try to okay, I want to. I'm willing to pay more because that's uh, what many people said in both UK and English. Uh, yeah. They look usually try to many try to look for a more eco-friendly, sustainable, or green or organic or whatever brands. Also, they uh, if they have option, they will buy an also the regular product. They will buy the eco-friendlier one. Many of them are willing to pay more to pay a premium. Some of them, a small minority, but they are willing to pay huge premium over fifty percent, which is quite a lot. But in the end, you risk at the time being because there's no way to prove it which brand is the eco-friendliest, and or at least which brand satisfies the minimum threshold of eco-friendliness. You willing to spend your uh, money in vain? So we hope this will 
help in raising awareness. The law was before we did it. Uh, we did the survey, so it's, it's clear the European legislature, the European members of Parliament knew about this issue. Uh, there was a lot of thinking around this law. I, I don't think it came very easily, but we hope to to play at least a small part in it. Uh, we proved that th- yes, there is. Uh, th- this law came, th- didn't came out of nothing, out of the thin air. There is real interest for uh, for eco friendly. Or uh, another part we tackle. I, I, I you probably noticed. I came back uh, very often to the durable and repairable products mm-hmm. because uh, durability has uh, two advantages also durable pro- uh, product it's usually as- associated if not always with quality because it to last longer it's supposed to be built better yeah and mm-hmm. also it's um, uh, it's a good thing for the environment for the planet because durable pro- uh, product will be replaced uh, Later, it would last longer, and so we'll generate a, a lot, lot, uh, a, a lot uh, less waste. And uh, Do you we, think yeah, we, we. Sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, what we, what category of products we treated uh, around durability and reparability here were, in principle, electronics. Yeah, portable computing device like, okay, smartphone, laptop, computer. And so on. The other types of consumer electronic household, like uh, I don't know, TV, your uh, gaming console, audio system, and stuff like that, and the appliances, both small and large appliances, which are generating a lot of waste, solid waste, and combined with uh, electronic waste. You know, uh, so there's a lot of it. Durability and repairability could. Uh, help us to reduce the, the amount of waste and of course to use a lot less a lot less resources than uh, just uh, throwing them after a couple of years and buy some new ones so it's it's interconnected with this kind of eco friendliness just is from a slightly different angle more or less on the same on the same Page. I was I was thinking when you were talking about the durability and repairability specifically, because um, from my understanding, like you can change the way that the products are made, and you can. Yeah. In recent years, we we see like all these, you know, these prototypes of phones with like the batteries are again. You can change yeah. the batteries again, like it's the same thing that we did like I don't know, 10, 15 <laughs> yeah. years ago. Like you yeah, could remove yeah. the battery and just swap it for a new one. Yeah. And now they are like doing like these new prototypes as, as like this new big thing. But yeah. it kind of reminds me that it's not always the products because you also have to understand how to do it. And you also have to know exactly. how to do it. So you exactly. have to, to learn how to do that. It's not just the product evolving, right? Exactly. And just to, to point out that you sound uh, somehow stepped on the problem. This law is also tackling this kind of, this is not on the green, greenwashing, it's, it's on the misleading product information uh, section, but it's, as I said, reparab- repairability and durability are, I think, uh, are enhancing the eco-friendliness of uh, consumer products. So one of the issues was, okay, you cannot claim a product is repairable, when it in fact is not in practical terms, what that does mean? Okay, you can repair it in theory, but if you don't have access to instruction, yeah, how to do it? If you don't have uh, access to spare parts, or the spare parts are expensive like hell, you cannot claim anymore that the product is repairable. So this is you kind of guessed what one of the of the issues this uh, directive is trying to to address. Because right now, a bunch yeah. of the products are kind of repairable, right? Like are kind you, of, but... Uh, but it's okay. so difficult for the general public and the general audience to do it that they're basically not repairable at all. Or, or, or they cost... Uh, this is or they, yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, the yeah. plant of, of solaces. If it's, cost, it's costing so much, I don't know, to repair a product, it costs 80% like a new one. Yeah. Why... You're going to throw it and buy the new generation. Yeah? Uh, and also it's relating to the 
is not just about the physical product, the hardware, it's also about the software because in the modern world, more and more uh, devices, including appliances, uh, have an important software part. So it's forbidden, it, the new directive will forbid to promote software updates to give you an example, a practical example related to s- smartphones, but not just smartphones, to a lot of uh, electronic devices. You, you will not be able to promote software updates as mandatory if they don't uh, address critical issues like functionality or security issues. And uh, uh, even more, you will not be able to push uh, software updates that m- might lead to loss of functionality without uh, notifying the consumers. You know, the, the famous software updates for the older smartphone, which make them start uh, to crawl, you know, they yeah. start to work very slowly. You will not be able to do, do this anymore. This will only be in the EU, right? So yeah. let's say that I have like, I don't know, like an iPhone or something like that, and yep. it get, but I bought it here. Yep. Do you think the big companies will eventually, since they already have to apply these laws and these changes to a certain market, they will just do it globally or it's just too hassle? Uh, to do it? It's hard to say. Maybe in the long term, I hope in the long term, yes, because uh, I suspect it's not just having to deal with two ki- uh, two types of uh, physical, two lines of uh, of the same product using quite different logistic uh, and software uh, uh, supply chains which is a pain in the ass for the producers. But also I suspect the regulators in other parts of, of the world will be inspired by this law. And that's why we uh, we went first with the UK, uh, because we felt it's a very close. Uh, it's basically part, part of the Europe, but not the, of the EU, EU anymore, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very much influenced by what happens in Europe. We, we just uh, thought about, okay, just a short uh, thought exercise. What it means for a business from UK, which deals with the EU either by selling there or importing products from there, and which uses this type of claims, of friendly repairability and durability claims. It will be a nightmare if it doesn't prepare from the start. Because it risks, if it, okay, it's not my problem, it's in you, okay. And uh, uh, that business might find it itself after two or three years when the uh, the law will start to work. Uh, okay, I have some products, some tea, let's say, mm-hmm. English tea, I say it's uh, organic, uh, green, whatever, this kind of, okay. And it will try to sell to the EU. And then when the day comes, okay. Uh, okay, you have a great, nice tea. Uh, how do you prove this is uh, organic or green or uh, eco-friendly, uh, depending on your message? Because I say so. Okay, it doesn't work like that anymore in you. You understand? That's, it's a, that's interesting. Business it will be a real business issue. Okay, so what can you do in this? Either give up those claims for the product you sell in uh, EU, if you are... For, for tourism, uh, there could be tourism, of, of course. One, you cannot sustain those claims, so the law does this job. Or you are not able to obtain the certification for various reasons. You don't have time, you don't want to waste resources. I don't know. But uh, uh, what do you do with the products you keep selling in UK and other parts of the world? You give up uh, those uh, organic, eco-friendly claims. If you're not, you will have two types of packaging, two uh, streams of products, two streams of marketing. So it's a, it's an additional hassle. So it, this, yeah. yeah, this law, even for countries around, especially for uh, neighbors or those dealing heavily with EU, either by selling or buying from, there will be real business consequences. And we also talk about, uh, Madalena also talked about, about a bit uh, at the end of the presentation. So it's just, okay, this is not just in theory, okay, to be greener and planet friendly, which is one of the purpose, but it will have real business consequences. So 
businesses that this kind of aims and product information which are tackled by this law should better start prepared because this kind of changes you know you cannot change the messaging the packaging the stuff overnight so you have yeah. to prepare although it seems in two three years it's, it's a lot of time but uh, in business terms is not uh, is not very much especially if you don't plan from and you have time to plan ahead and and prepare for this you change, have time right? so yeah have... if you pay attention if you don't yeah <laughs> you might have a nasty have a really nasty surprise so we yeah, ask about uh, yeah we we also ask the uk uk people what the uh, this is a couple of questions we ask people from the uh, country what do they think about the, this law in general after we presented the summary or one page summary if he, uh, they think in general it will help people to uh, make uh, decisions more informed decision and uh, have uh, how should i say to find products that live to their true expectation about sustainability environmental impact climate impact durability and repairability and the overwhelming answer were positive in both greece and the uk and then we ask okay uh, forget about the general relevance but for you do you think yeah. it will help you to make a better decision you you will in fact the question was something like how much would you be likely to trust advertising a product information which complies with such laws compared with advertising a product information which doesn't follow any rule and the vast majority says uh, at least somewhat more likely to trust uh, more than half in fact about a third two thirds sorry in both greece and uk so it has a real uh, this kind of law uh, it has real relevance to people to consumers they will appreciate and the final questions which were uh, this time a bit different in um, uk and greece because it's the different context in uk we asked if they they thought that the uk government the authorities should implement a similar law in uk and the the, the overwhelming majority say yes and for okay. greece we ask if they think their neighbors which are dealing a lot with with uh, eu should do the same implement similar law and of course they said yes most of them So it has has real impact and people appreciate such law because it brings clarity yeah and trust like and trust think, yeah at the end of the day the consumers need to trust that brand and to trust yeah, and that what they're saying is true and and I can bring to and, and have real alternative because uh, for me it's an issue I try to make make some this kind of choices at some points and i don't know what to what to believe because it's, you don't know you just don't know it's too much to you don't know how much uh, how 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 real the the, the deeds are behind this uh, all this talk about uh, friendliness environmental friendliness and so on and uh, sustainability which is uh, uh, in my view sustainability is a <laughs> abused word and uh, more like an empty shell for the time being because we we research sustainability for other project uh, related to food sustainability in particular and it's it's kind of uh, an ambitious objective it's not easy to achieve it's very yeah. hard to achieve but uh, i think those words like those big words yeah it's big words just big words in, in many cases words. yeah yeah and the it's organic, a shame. Sustainable, so. Yeah, again, green, eco-friendly, nature-friendly, nature-neutral. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of combinations, yeah. which can mean any, anything, and m- many times means nothing. And it, as I said, it's a shame for both the consumers because many of them want to make such planet-friendlier choices, and also for the companies with, which are doing uh, genuine efforts in this direction of course don't buy this perfect but there are companies who are trying but you, they cannot stand 
above the rest because it's it's too much noise. What's the final takeaway or, or key point that you want to, everyone listening should take from this conversation? I hope that this kind of laws will spread around the world. And at least they will, I'm egoistical, I'm, I live in EU, so... <laughs> I think uh, people blame you for a lot of things, including the EU by bureaucracy. But as you can see, this bureaucracy can, can be put to good use. And I think this is a very good example of this. And uh, I hope this law will came into fruition as soon as possible. Help me to make better choice, help other people to make better choice, uh, properly informed choice choices and uh, also to as i said to help the brands which uh, did uh, real efforts in these uh, areas and uh, they deserve because uh, it's one way to do it and one way just to brag about it but do nothing so and uh, right. as i said regardless of their real credential every business which has this kind of claim should uh, start to look for this uh, the law, this directive, and uh, start to make a contingency plan because it could be a surprise for those who who don't prepare. It could be sooner than 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 later. Like people need to start preparing. Yeah, I I hope sooner. But even if if it's later, if you don't prepare, if you yeah. do business as usual, it works now. Why bother? It might be the shock of the moment when the when the uh, time comes. Uh, you've seen, probably you've read that even with a lot of preparation, when UK, because we talk about UK separated from the EU, there was a lot of uh, hassle and pain and uh, how to make things worse than the separation between the EU and the uh, UK was very, very painful, even with preparations. This is not on the same order of magnitude, but could be a a big, uh, big, uh, ugly surprise for those who are not preparing at all. I don't know how many there are, but I suspect there might be some people who say, okay, we'll see closer to the yeah. point Pushing of, with the bellies. Yeah, and, yeah and we'll what, wait, we'll wait a bit more. Yeah, we'll wait a bit more. But you know what happens in many in such cases when you wait a bit more, a bit more, and it proves to be too, uh, too late, and you start yeah. to panic when the... Uh, uh, the countdown starts, so it's it's better just to be prepared. And maybe they will reevaluate their their strategy. Those who just make are making claims, but nothing actually they don't do actually uh, eco friendly stuff. Maybe they will want to also to start acting because and, the consumer at the yeah. same time is already more aware of these things. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I think yeah, and they talk uh, quite a bit. Uh, because this is one of, uh, of the areas we investigate, which are the sources of information. And uh, as you can expect, there is a uh, word of mouth, but also the customers want to believe the brand. I think that combined the main sources uh, of information are the primary sources, the producer, the brand themselves, and their sellers. So this is where they look. They don't start to... Okay, if you have also... Some somebody who had experience with that uh, type of product or brand, of, you listen to them. You start looking for, uh, I don't know, reviews uh, and stuff like that. But still, the brands and the sellers, so the primary sources of information, the officials, let's say, are the very, very popular sources of information for people who look for, I don't know, how eco-friendly, planet-friendly, climate-neutral, repairable or uh, uh, durable uh, product or brand is. So uh, people want to trust brands. They don't start with, I don't know, I I have to check everything they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's, yeah, that's really, really interesting. It's good and this law will make this kind of sources much more credible, much more credible. Because they wouldn't be allowed to exaggerate. Yeah. Well, Let's say, think... okay, <laughs> euphemistically, exaggerate if not outright lies. So, yeah. It, I think it will go be good for consumers and for the market health in general. 
I think too. Yeah, it's it's a, a really important uh, change that needs drastically to be put to practice soon because it, we yeah we, this needs to change. Something needs to change, and I think this is a really good starting point. Yeah, because you know, in the end, the regulatory government, the regulatory authorities have to step in. It does. It doesn't work by itself. The rules in any domain. I think if you want to. Uh, maintain some basic quality standards. You have to have clear regulation and authorities which follow, and which keep an eye on this, because otherwise they won't risk be. falling apart. And uh, there are many, many people losing. As I said, people trying to find what they want and owners brand, which try to do that. It's a, it's a, it's Thank you very much, Liv, you for, for this. We're way beyond time now. <laughs> this was supposed okay, to be sorry, a, sorry, short, but... a short interview. But no, yeah. no, it's really important. And I think the the, the when when I'm doing this this type of interviews and when we're doing these podcasts, we pick always topics that are important and are new to especially for market research for mm-hmm. the companies and the brands to have something to think about that's mm-hmm. gonna happen sometimes in the near future, sometimes Things that are already like happening and they're not even they're not even thinking about it and this is one of those topics this is one of those laws that the brands the people they need to, to get on track so thank you very much for for your study thank you very much for creating this and, and you're welcome uh, our study is available on our uh, website well you have to register to download it but that's about it because we the full report of the of the study because uh, Madalina did just a short uh, presentation in the time available it wasn't meant to be something very a long and boring presentation there wasn't time anyway uh, but there was uh, there's more information, more detailed information in the report, and you can see you can get a better idea of uh, what I just uh, try to describe in very broad terms here. Yeah, I'll link this. I'll link the. I'll put the link in the in the show notes and in the description. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for being here, Livio. It was really a pleasure. Well, you're welcome. It was a pleasure for me to. I think it it was obvious. I like the subject, and it was a pleasure to talk to you and also to present it because uh, I hope uh, people will will find it interesting. Yeah. Well, let me just stop. And as always, thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.